Hello ladies and gents! Welcome back to another summer week full with piping hot armored action and also with a brand new stream schedule. As from this week, Mondays will be the day for my English World of Tanks streams and Wednesdays will be the Hungarian edition. On both days I will start from 6 pm Central European time, going at least up until 10 pm, although quite often I will go up until 11 or even midnight. Shameless self-promotion aside though, today I have something very very special for you. Courtesy of Hawkeye414, we will watch today one of the most entertaining replays I've seen in a while. The armor of choice today will be the famous VK2801. Light tank mobility combined with a 105mm howitzer? What could go wrong? The chat, by the way, is absolutely hilarious as well. If you have the resolution for it, I highly suggest keeping an eye on the endless banter there too. So, did I get your attention already? Then check this out. Alright, so here we are in our VK2801, this time around on Mountain Pass. Now this map is really not the light tank driver's dream. You should be able to do something nice though, cause, well, we are pretty much top tier. Look at this, only a couple of tier 7s on both of the teams, actually we have one more than the enemy team. So we should be as powerful as it can be really. On the other hand, well, while neither of the teams seem to be particularly strong, the enemy team seems to have the more experienced players on average on their side. And also, somehow, probably because of the platoons, the enemy team ended up with having all of the 5 heavy tanks in the game. Well done matchmaking, well done. Anywho, let's see what we can do. I have to say that we will fire a lot of heat ammunition in this match and... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! That T4 looks really did some damage there. I have to be careful with that guy. That looks tasty though. Om nom nom. <laughs> 0.53 meters dispersion, my ass. German fucking accuracy. So as I was saying, we will fire a lot of heat in this match. And, well, Hokai is definitely a gold spamming bastard in this match, but he is a very very good bastard Reno. Now until we are waiting it out a little bit here, and by the way, keep an eye on chat, it's bloody hilarious. The banter is just ongoing non-stop from start to finish, and in a good-hearted way most of the time as well, which is really refreshing to say. So as we are waiting here, let's have a quick word or two about the VK2801. Now this is the tier 6 German light tank that also gets a 105mm howitzer as its gun option, which we are definitely using in this case. Firing this gun, you have to put up with some really really low shell velocity. 376 meters per sec means that, well, your shells will travel for ages in the air before hitting their target, so sniping with this gun is not something that will mostly happen. You also have to put up with the usual howitzer-like uh, dispersion values. 0.53 meters over 100 meters is very much like the derp guns on most machines. Although, having said that, well, you did see how much that did work out for that T-67. Other than this, mobility is superb on this machine. 68 km per hour top speed combined with a really healthy 24.5 horsepower per ton power to weight ratio means that we can shift around the battlefield. And as that looks really didn't want to pop out again, this means that we should be go out and hunt our own food. Hello, Mr. T37. <laughs> Tier 6 light tank in your face. Hello, it's me. Oh man, heat or no heat, a light tank derping an enemy in its face and one-shotting it is always going to be funny. 
Now this right here is a really good opportunity to take out this, well, by now half half IS, which is their only tier 7 heavy tank. And what we do here is exactly the right thing, we let the SU-152 get into position and as soon as the IS turns its attention, we are able to put in a nice little shell there in the back of its turret. Now here for the second round we could load HE really, but then again, securing the kill before the IS is able to put one more round into, the, uh, into our SU, which is a very valuable asset, was probably a good enough reason to still keep on firing premium. So, this site has been secured. On the other side though, the situation is not looking too rosy. The middle is pretty much uncontested, there is only a Yak Panther holding it more or less. And the whole northern part of the map has fallen, meaning that there is at least a Churchill and a Panzer 4 H that's going to be zooming towards our cap. I like it as well that we take the high ground here, which is probably the uh, most useful location that we can be in. I don't really know what the plan for the artillery is there though. He doesn't have the gun depression, unlike us. 10 degrees is excellent. Combine it with a dirt gun and you can make for some really nice surprises for the enemy. Well, nice surprises for us, not so much for them. Now there are a couple of times in this match when firing HE could have been working out at least as well, if not better, and this will be one of them. We should be able to get a nice little fire from down below into the engine deck of this Churchill. If we just move a little bit forward, I don't think he has the uh, gun elevation for that. And there we go, and there is the fire as well. That's great! Another kill secured and that is that pesky looks. Ooh, and that was artillery. Have to be careful. So HE might have been able to do the job, but let's focus better on this uh, Panzer 4 H. Another derpy machine. <laughs> he did not really realize that justice from above. So that was a rather nice assassination, and that means we are already on 5 kills, having secured over 1400 damage. And that Lux is still there, continuing to be a nuisance. I think it's time that we even the scores. Tier 6 light tank versus tier 4 light tank. He has a really really dangerous autoloader however, so we have to be careful. Come on RNG, do your thing. Now this is looking really green for looks and whoa, that was the M12. And oh my god, what the hell was that? Leaving the looks on exactly 4 HP. Jesus Christ, that was a low roll by the way. The average damage for the uh, heat shells and the AP shells as well is 350. And we managed to roll for 336, basically allowing the looks to take us out in one single clip. Well, that's RNG for you in a nutshell right there. Don't worry though, all the excitement is really far from over. Now, we have the advantage here, 12 against them. However, there is a really skilled M12 player on the enemy team. And also, the enemy Grilla is doing some crazy work. I mean, look at that shot. Taking out the Cromwell without even doing a tiny fraction of damage to the M6. Never mind though, because our Grilla takes care of the M6 itself. So, wow, artillery power, right? We still have a two tank advantage. Well, never mind that. The M12 is taking out the SU-152, who really shouldn't have been pushing there. I mean, he had the M12 cornered. Just waiting until the artillery could take him out would have been the right play. 
So that's a shame. It's a very valuable Tengam. And that leaves us with a Crusader on 101 health, which is basically a splash zone for both of the artilleries. One Grille and an M12 against their Grille and their M12. And those guys are already together on 5 kills, so yeah, this can be a little bit tricky. Still, we have a pretty good idea where they are, and if the Crusader can just light them up, for our artillery, without putting himself into danger, we really should have this in our bag. It's never that easy though, is it? So, come on Crusader, you can do it mate. And one thing hopefully he will not do, is stop right there on top of that ridge, because the artillery will be able to hit him there in a lot of the times. I don't really expect the M12 to be making a huge mistake there. Closing in can be a little tricky as well, the M12 can easily come over the top and take us out. <laughs> By the way, Hawkeye has been using the chat non-stop this time around, trying to mislead the enemy team that the Crusader flipped itself. <laughs> Oh man, I really hope that you can read the chat as well, it's hilarious. But well, let's wait, there is the Grilla. Oh, this is dangerous, it will take a lot of shots for us to take out that same tier artillery. And the Grilla did turn. Oh, but he misses the shot and that means there is plenty of time to take it out. Where is the M12 though? Ah, crap. Well, that's the difference between a, an average and a good artillery player. Look at that M12, absolutely assassinating the Crusader, and, well, he won't really be idle for the rest of the match either. So that leaves us in a really tricky situation, there is two artillery against one, and Hawkeye is suggesting to, in the chat, to stay together, which is the right thing to do. The two artillery are, however, really far away from each other, pretty much on the two sides of the map, so they won't be able to support each other directly. And on this map it's really easy to get into a position where direct artillery support is not available. Question is, where is the M12? Is he hiding behind those rocks? Did he maybe go up to secure his own cap? Is he maybe coming for our cap, trying to hound, uh, hound the artillery? Oh yes he is! There is actually the M12. So M12 face off. May the best M12 win. Oh, careful, let's not rush the shot. No, that's not what you had to do. Unfortunately, M12 gets a little bit trigger happy, fires it into the wall, but luckily the Grilla steps in. What an absolute artillery mayhem in the end. What an absolute crazy game from start to finish, with some non-stop action even after Hawkeye got luxed out of the game. Sure, we did fire a lot of heat in this match, but I don't find it any less hilarious when a light tank casually one-shots its opposition. Back to the results though. Probably just falling short of an ace, this was only a first-class mastery. At least we got our first marks of excellence with it though. As for the team results, however, just wow. Tier 6 light tank for the win. We have the most damage done and the most kills secured in the entire match with 1760 damage and 5 kills, meaning that we most certainly had our carry pants on this time. And, well, let's be honest here, this team definitely needed a little bit of help. All in all, we fired 7 shots, scoring 7 hits and 7 penetrations. Welcome to the balanced world of premium ammunition. Something to keep in mind though is that every single one of those heat shells will set you back with a whopping 4000 credits. So even with this result we ended up losing over 10k by the end of it. Right, this was then our light tank derp action in the tier 6 German VK2801. Many thanks to Hawkeye once again for sending in this great replay. I hope you guys have been just as much entertained as I was, and if so, 
Thanks a lot for considering giving this a like or sharing it. Now there is still a lot more coming your way this week, including some more funny moments tomorrow, a new episode from the revamped Good or Bad series, and a review on the legendary FV304, aka Bertie Avenger. So stay tuned for the coming days as well. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you soon.